This is Mr. Smith, and this is a tutorial to introduce my students to the basics of HitFilm for Express. If you are not one of my media art students, this tutorial might still be helpful for you, but just keep in mind my target audience. So let's move on. When you first open up HitFilm for Express, if you are using the version on our school computers, you have a school licensed version of HitFilm for Express. You will see nothing over here about different packs you can buy. If you're using a home version, which is perfectly acceptable, so long as you've registered it, it's free to do. Uh, then you'll see things here that you can buy with parents' permission. You're not going to need any of those things from my class. Now to make a new project, you click on New here, or File and New right here. They both do the same thing. And you will have templates that you can select from. And you will also be able to set these individually. There's a whole bunch of templates. If you want to be the next Vine or Instagram star, you've got options for those. But in my class, the minimum I want to see is 720p. And chances are you're going to want it to be as close to 30 frames per second as possible. The 29.97 FPS is basically from TVs. But that's another story that we're not going to get into. Bottom line, it will adjust your video as it sees fit. So you can leave it like that and just click start editing. Okay, so this is what your interface is going to look like when you first open it up. You can resize these. You can make them smaller and larger. You can move them around. I don't tend to, but you can move them to your heart's content. First thing you need to do is add some stuff. So we're going to go to where it says media. And you have a whole bunch of tabs here you can switch between with these arrow keys. And we're going to click on import and we're going to add some things. So I'm going to add this title here. I am actually going to add, let's add both of these titles. Because we're going to do something with those later. And we are going to add a video that I recorded with the camera. Now, when you take any clip that has audio in it and drag it over into the timeline over here, you will see two tracks show up, one for audio and one for video. You can separate these, but for the most part, it's a good idea to keep them linked. Now, I can go through and hit play. This is often done with the space bar as well. It's Monday. As you can tell, there's a bit of a gap in the beginning of that. That is a good idea to add in your recordings because it makes editing things together a lot easier. But you don't really want that gap in your actual recording that you are exporting for public consumption. So I'm going to zoom in using this little bar down here. The bigger the mountains, the more you've zoomed in. You don't need to zoom in that far usually. That's great for if you really want to fine tune something. But if I take a look at this, oh look, you see right here where this little mountain appears here in the audio track? This is telling me that that's right where I start making a lot of noise. Before that, it's basically just background static. So I can move the cursor to here, and you see I'm looking really creepy, but also that's right when I'm about to speak. So I can actually trim that, and there's a few ways I can do that. I can click on this razor blade here, the slice tool, and then click on any spot on this, and it'll trim it. I'm going to control Z that. You can right click and pick slice, and if you do that, it'll slice right where the playhead is, right where that white line is. But a third option is also listed right here, Control Shift D, which is what I like to use most. So when I'm ready to split something, I just hold down Control Shift D, and it splits it into two separate clips. I can click on Whoops, I'm still using the slice tool, which is why I don't like to use that, because I forget that I'm using it, and then everywhere I click, I'm just slicing everything. And you could undo that, but I'm just going to select all of these things at the beginning and get rid of them, because I didn't want them anyway. So I'm going to drag this all the way over to the beginning, and I'm going to add my title. Now, there's a few ways you can do that. I made a title in Inkscape, and I can just throw this right on top. The higher up something is in the timeline... So video 1 is at the bottom, video 2 will always be on top of video 1, video 3 will be on top of those other two, etc. So any image that has a transparency in it, you'll see things through that. You can also do chroma key, but I'm going to save that for another video. And if I zoom out a bit to show you, I can also take these clips and make them 
larger and shorter if they're imported images. Now, another way I can add titles, I'm getting really creeped out by my face. No, that's not so much better. That, that's kind of worse. I guess that's okay. Well, in any case, I can make titles in HitFilm Express also. They work pretty easily. You just need to make a new composite. Now, don't click here. This will screw you up. Instead, click on New over here in the Media tab and pick Composite Shot. Now, you can give it a name. I like to name my titles Titles so I know which one I'm messing with. I like to leave this as the exact same size as the video I'm working on, so 1280 by 720 in this case. Click OK, and oh, everything went away. Well, not really. The video I'm editing is still right here under the Editor tab, but the title composite is separate. And if I look over here in the media list, there is something there called title. That's whatever I'm making here. I'm going to right-click and add a new layer. I'm going to make that be text. And I often like to make this be the same size as everything else, but I'm going to leave this at 400 by 400 just so I can show you some stuff. Okay, so that's how big my text is going to be in my screen. Maybe I want that, maybe I don't. I usually don't, but humor me here. So you can add text here. I'm just typing gibberish just for the sake of it. And if I go all the way over in this section here to where it says text, I have all of my editing options. I can select all of this, and I can change the font to whatever font I like. I highly recommend you have a few fonts picked out in advance before you go to this stage because it can get really tricky really fast to try to pull yourself away from going through all the different fonts that are available. This is a horrible mess to fall into. Okay, so once I've picked a font that I like, I can make it larger or smaller. I can just type in numbers if I want to. I can change the color here. I can change the color to something specific by clicking on the eyedropper and then clicking on a color. Well, clicking and dragging. So I can make that text blue. But if I make the text blue, you see how it doesn't show up very well against a dark background? Well, I can add a stroke layer on this, an outline. All I need to do is first pick my color. I usually go with white if I'm using a dark color, or black if I'm using a light color for the font itself. And this number here is the border size. So let's start with 5 and see how that looks. So as you can see, 5 is kind of thick. Maybe that's too much. But let's try for 3. That looks a little better. That might be okay. So let's see how this text looks in front of my video. Let's go back to where it says media. And click on editor. And I can take this title and I can drag it in right on top of everything else or I can have it appear afterwards. I'm going to make it appear afterwards real quick. And there's my text. Now I can use these arrows, the green arrow can move it up or down without having it slide back and forth. The red arrow, likewise, will have it move left and right. I can click on the center portion and drag it freely wherever I want. I can even resize this by clicking and dragging this way, but you'll get a better effect if you've already made it be the size you want it to be. Resizing text afterwards sometimes looks a little bad. And I can also use this square here. If I mouse over, you see that circle. I can click and rotate the text in any direction I want. Now there's also effects and stuff that you can do, but I'm going to save that for later video. Let's focus on exporting. Now once my video is all done and I'm happy with it, which we're going to pretend I'm happy with this. I'm not. We click on export. Now the default will want you to upload it to YouTube. Don't bother with this. Instead, always go with MP4, which is usually the second tab. And you usually don't need to change any of these settings. So long as you've clicked on MP4, click on Export, it will ask you to name it, hit Save, and then you'll see a progress bar go across. Keep in mind where you're exporting the file to, and keep in mind what you have named it, because a lot of students accidentally upload the hit film file as opposed to the exported mp4 and one of those I can grade the other one I can't 
Also make sure your export is completely finished before you upload it because if you upload it to Google Classroom before it's finished exporting, I'm not going to have a complete video. I might just have a little bit of a placeholder that actually contains no video whatsoever. So make sure that export has finished first. So that's the bare bones basics of HitFilm for Express. If you have any questions, feel free to ask or look at my next video for more information. Have fun.